Welcome back. So I have been talking a, a couple of times about this this color over here, about the red and the orange and the white. So let's let's talk a little more deep about it, so how to use it. So let's let's get this closer to you. For a normal operation, um, you put this uh, the, the the dot over here and the the. There's two colors. There's this the the button color. That's what this thing is, and this thing actually moves. So it spins. The bottom ones don't spin. So you, the normal operation would be uh, to align the square down here, which is actually a, a lever over here as well. You align that into the the color button, the white. So let's say the A and B, and this would enable the camera to work with. Uh, a various safety mechanisms of operation, electronical operation. So, if you have the dark light on, or if it's not cranked, it will electronically let you know what's going on, and it would also work with the with the shutter speeds and stuff. Um, uh, it would you know be using the battery to to check all this stuff, which is just a little you know a couple of sensors with spring sensors and stuff. Um, so when you're not using the camera, you can uh, lock the shutter release button. And all you need to do is just align the dot, the white dot, on the uh, the release, uh, on the release button color, with the red dot over here on the side. And all you do this. So when you do this, it's not just that you're uh, preventing unintentional exposures, but also you also prevent the battery uh, battery depletion. Because uh, when you semi-press this thing over here, uh, the battery would start sending in a sensor um, signal to the camera parts just to see, okay, when you're halfway here, not just when you press it, but when you're halfway here, the battery will start checking, okay, do I have a lens, is this thing crank up, is there film, is there a dark slide, so everything is going to be checked up, right? So if I just leave it like this, and just go back to sleep or I put it on a camera case and this is halfway pressed the battery is going to be constantly be used just to check if everything is ready for you to take the picture so when you are not shooting remember to put it on the red zone and allow it to rest and not to spend the the, the battery like that um, I know this is something that a lot of people would not actually use because you just put the camera back there you think you're not shooting so you're cool but um, this is um, this is a very important thing just to take care of the battery and so you lock it and you lock it and this is a secure mechanism and you you make sure that you get used to be using that while you're shooting while you're walking so you don't you don't do unintentional exposures or drain your battery unnecessarily the third part of this would be the orange zone of course which is uh, the emergency shorter operation so if your battery just suddenly just died <laughs> on you Right, this is a dead battery, and you're in the middle of a photographic session, right? So, you can switch to the energy um, emergencies shutter operation mode. By, um, I mean, it's it's hard to do it like while you can see it because you know you need like three fingers to move this thing up. Uh, two fingers just to spin the wheel like that, right? Um, and what you need to do is uh, there's a color. This is the color stop le lever, right? So you put this thing. You push it towards the camera body, and uh, as you can see earlier, uh, there you go. You can just push it there, and then that's gonna work as an unlock. And then you can you can spin that wheel on the top. There you go. I managed to do it with one finger, but usually I just push it with this finger and then use this two to to spin it around. It's a little more difficult, and I don't really need to do it unless I'm just like doing tests because that would shoot no matter what right so that one would ignore all the electronic um, that setting the emergency sort of operation mode would ignore all the electronic uh, safety checkings that the, the camera can do electronically and the speed would be defaulted by an approximately one four hundred of a second which is like the most um, the most fast fast speed that this camera can shoot um, but uh, you know in this this will also prevent the battery from from being used so the battery is not going to be used in there 
but the camera will be able to trigger and there will be action in here so if you're actually not going to be using the camera just put it back there you only use that emergency uh, shutter uh, operation only for emergencies <laughs> like our I mean there is no way there is no necessity for you to to kill all the electronics just to shoot at 400 of speed I mean you already have it here and the camera is designed to be used so it, just in case you find out that you don't have the battery you can still shoot so that's a great thing the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys that I've been actually mentioning here and there is this the RM lever and um, I think on a previous video I did a little bit of rant because Mamiya calls it the RM lever but um, <laughs> when you read it, it's, it reads an MR. Yeah, well, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I think it's uh, because of the R, right? The, the the rotation kind of thing. So I guess they want to put it as a as the most important thing. And the M is just for multiple exposures. So I guess the most important would be. Uh, I'm just mumbling here. <laughs> but anyways, so the, this right here, um, this position right here is what they call the normal position. And in the normal position. Um, the camera would move, uh, would keep the shutter count. When you crank the lever, it would actually move to the next frame. So when you put the lever here, it will move to the next frame, and it will make sure that every time you shoot, there is film and there is a new frame here. And it will not let you shoot if it will not let you shoot if this um, there is no film or there's no. Uh, or the, the the frame still hasn't moved so you need to crank this thing up so basically it will just uh, prevent you from doing multiple exposures uh, or accidental double exposures which could happen if you don't have that if you don't have this normal thing now the M part of this when you actually want the multiple exposures for you know some artistic kind of thing or you're gonna do uh, some more creative type of photography where you're shooting one type of image and then you're going to overlap it to another type of image. I've seen some amazing stuff done, not just artistic, you know, like uh, clouds in a field or faces in something like this, but I've seen I've seen stuff w done where somebody shot uh, a lens and then on the background uh, they shot the lens really close to the to the camera and then they did another photo shoot where they just shoot on the background it was just a glow out of focus with a, a blackout of the lens so they did these two exposures and the lens seems to be glowing and this was uh, shot on film without doing any Photoshop so I mean there's a lot of creative things that you can do with multiple exposures if you know your values and you know your exposures um, mirrorings and everything you can do everything perfect and it will get it on film and that's just the amazing thing to do I mean that's the real job as a photographer is not to be a retoucher being Photoshop but to actually get the images that you want on the camera um, uh, as perfect as you can, you know, retouching it would be not to be creative, but to to just enhance a little bit of the details that, that you could have missed or that could not be arranged in a photo shoot, but I mean, there's a lot of creativity that can be done and I feel that it's more natural when you see it on the picture than when you actually try to do it everything digitally. Um, and okay, the last one is, is pretty obvious, there are the revolving back position, so if you move it over here to the R, the back can be spin just in two ways so this and this you have the horizontal and the vertical position and this is actually pretty cool because you, you're shooting with the camera always up like this right so when you're shooting portraits um, I've seen photographers that, that 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 turn the camera like that right not this camera but you know those those normal um, SLRs they turn it like this and sometimes they, they, they change their position and they turn it the other way and they turn it like this and so they're shooting like this and like this when they do they want to do some kind of portrait position shooting and what they end up doing and I'm, I'm faulty I'm guilty of that too when I had a, a, a 30 35 millimeter camera what you end up having is when you're looking through your roll of film or oh, the camera sometimes doesn't figure out which one was up which one was down so when you're looking at your film or uh, sometimes digitally also uh, you, you, you're you gonna see portrait images or you know not landscape side but portrait images you're gonna see a face up and then a face down and a face face down face down face down the face up and it's just because you were moving your camera to this side and to this side and so which was is up so this one was definitely definitely um, 
prevents you from doing that because there is only one up. There is no way that I can flip it 180 degrees right here. So it's always going to be, the faces are going to be up here. Well, actually down here, but it will be always on the same side. And uh, the horizontal will always be like that. It would not be in backwards, of course. Um, and that would be the, the R method. Now, once you, you finish rolling this, as soon as you, you move this, you see, I'm on the R. I move it a little bit, and it goes back. I'm on the R. I press a little bit on the shutter, and it goes back as well. You see, it always returns to the normal position if I move this thing a little bit. I can put it on the M, and it will not allow me to crank. Uh, right now, no, it will not allow me to shoot, but it will not, it will not move. So, um, it's a really cool thing because um, the way that I do it, if I'm shooting, I'm gonna try to do it real fast. I'm, I'm shooting, bam, bam, bam. I wanna rotate it. I move this thing to the R, rotate my back, and then I just touch this thing a little bit, this lever. I just push it a little bit and it's ready to shoot and then I can shoot again. Maybe it's cranked already, but I just need to push a little bit. Now when I go back, put it to the R, bounce it, and release it. You see it will it will put it back in the middle. So if I do it quick, you see you push it front, um, push it front, flip this thing, release it, and then you're ready to shoot. So it actually looks pretty cool when you're like on field. Obviously you can just do it all down here, you know, you don't need to, to release it, but I think I can do it down here. But then I don't want to do it here because you may um, accidentally do an exposure that you, you may not want it to. So, so that's the two little things I just thought about putting in an extra separated spot. The, the release button color and the RM lever. See you next video.